Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday. It's May 6. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And interesting day. We had a huge gap on the chart today. Um, here's where we closed previously, and this is where we opened this morning. So that is a big gap, a uh, big gap down. Um, wasn't unexpected that prices would try to fill that gap. That's generally what happens. We try to fill it pretty quick. I don't know what happened after the close today on the reopen, but right after the reopen, boy, prices just dropped again. So um, I don't know if it's just thin trading and a big sale came in or what. But um, anyway, looks like it's really selling off this afternoon uh, on the reopen. But uh, anyway, it wasn't unexpected. Early on, we were in this little bit of a trading range here. Uh, just kind of sideways. So, uh, but then we quickly, after the open, it was all uphill after that. And really the way I would have looked at this, this little two-legged, there's really like a two-legged correction here. We actually dropped a little bit lower, but I would have measured this first leg. I would have probably just started here from the open first. That would have been my first measurement. And then I would have looked for a measured move. And you can see that would have got us close to the fill in the gap, but we didn't get there. And generally, if you don't make it, um, you'll see prices move pretty strongly in the opposite direction. And, of course, we see that here. Uh, they moved really strongly in the other direction. Um, but for, the, for today's trading, really, it was other than right here in the early morning trading, it was sideways here, but from really from the get-go of the open, it was all uphill. So, and we were kind of really making some higher highs and higher lows, but you couldn't ignore this resistance and the support here, it was obviously. And you had to be a little patient. There were a couple of shorts here maybe early on, um, and then you just kind of had to be patient until we prices finally corrected a little bit, and then there's some pretty good trades on the way up here, which we'll talk about. So let me back out, make it a little bigger, and we'll go from there. But you can clearly see we were just kind of going sideways here early on. Prices above the EMA, below it, above it, below it, above it, below it. And what does that mean? That tells you you're, you're in a, you know, you're going sideways mostly. It's um, it turns and goes up from there, but you had to play this early on. You had to kind of play the trends within the range, and uh, so we have a little failed breakout up here. Uh, notice we're working up. You get a couple of closes outside, then you move, and you get that little failed break higher, and you get that one more little push up. That's not a great signal bar, but you're a long way away from the EMA. You you, you try to go higher a couple of different times there. Uh, you've already had a break and a couple of legs up. Um, it's probably worth the risk if you want to be a little aggressive to try to ride that back to the EMA. Generally, you want to wait on that lower high. And if you'd had a good signal bar, this would have been perfect right off the right off the resistance area. But that's just too bullish. Uh, you got a reversal. Um, well, I shouldn't say a reversal, but a failed second entry long here. But we're not back to the EMA. We're not back to the possible trend line. So I would wait. And when it tried to go higher again and gives you this nice bearish bar, I like going short there right off the key entry point, basically off the EMA. It comes back again here. Um, so you might even try to enter again here. So I'm not as crazy about that one um, because you've been away. You can see you didn't quite get back to the EMA, and you've kind of been away a little bit now. You've really already had two legs down, two measured legs down. So you're, you know, you're starting to push it by going short here. But you may want to risk that one. If this is indeed a range, we're probably headed down here. It didn't turn out that way. It still would have worked, though. Uh, and that is a key entry point, that trend line out there. So anyway, I marked it as a possible green. It's a shame we didn't get a chance to catch this long. Look at that thing go. Uh, it rockets up. But we just really don't get a chance to catch that one. There weren't really any big news items or anything that came out here that I'm aware of. So um, the market just wanted to go higher, and that's what happens. Um, I definitely would have measured this leg. Oops, wrong one. Let's try that again. Measure that leg, and from here you're going to look for a measured leg up. And you can see we hit that and prices look like they were going to try to reverse. They went a little higher and 
finally we kind of settle into this uh, flatter trend here that's more of a 45 degree angle so um, but that would have given you a good target if you were in that trade I don't see any you don't want to go long here right into that previous high uh, you've been away from the EMA a good bit here that one is really tempting right there let me back back out again here but you just don't have a very good signal bar I mean you could look at that as a double test right there uh, you're not back to the EMA you're right into the highs um, not a very good signal bar you got a couple of bars stacking up there and it's you know it's just not really a good setup so I would wait uh, going short here was tempting but again um, if you look at if you're playing this trend line you got a break move to a new high then you're just going sideways and you get a little failed break higher fairly bearish bar but your supports right there and you don't know that it's not gonna hit there and bounce and push up again so turns out to be a good trade but you don't know that ahead of time so um, you're better off just to wait and you're you got a little trend working down you get a close outside move to a new low you bounce you go right through the EMA you pull back and test it you get a fairly bullish bar right there uh, I like going long right there you now you got it in notice it's closing inside that let's see if I can make this even bigger notice how it closes inside that support line and off it goes the trend has been up and now I would look for measured move right here and then come over here and go from there and you can see that's pretty close to where we got over here uh, I showed that one I think that's the one I showed you earlier but anyway uh, I always try to look for those measured moves this one moves on up and then kind of works back and I would draw that trend line off those first couple of swings there and knows how we come back to it um, new high you're working down first entry pull back uh, and now you've got a confirmation of that trend line and another confirmation and a second entry long right there and uh, if you would had a good signal bar you might even consider going long here because you get a close outside this little trend a new low and it's bouncing right off that but that's too bearish but you get that higher low right here on a second entry long I like that one uh, when it comes back and gives you notice how you got a new low there first entry second entry and so now you've got even two t attempts to go lower which a lot of your stronger traders are gonna wait on that you're, you're gonna want to see it try to go lower twice before they try to go long and you can see it kind of take on off from there and it actually came back again um, kind of a little fake out right there um, I'm not as you know if you've already entered in one of these which you sh that's where you should have entered if you're going to enter here I'm not as crazy about entering a third time because this really should have taken on off I'm not sure what happened there maybe maybe they just wanted to trap some more people maybe it didn't look good enough that people liked entering I don't know for whatever reason it came back again and made that um, a third attempt so now you got a little double test across there and, it, and then it finally goes higher um, there's a second entry long right here but that's your signal bar that's really just two sideways and it comes back and there's another second entry long here the only reason I don't like this one is if you draw this trend line off, off these highs and drag it down we're not back there yet um, we do have the sideways stuff but notice how that went a little lower and so you really didn't know that it was kind of holding there until you got a couple more attempts and you don't have very good signal bars there and you're really in a very tight um, deal there and it finally comes over here and drops a little lower and gives you another attempt but now it's right off where you expect that trend line to be and you've also got the brown trend line I, I need to back up and talk about that there's a bigger picture brown trend line in here two-tiered it doesn't really come into play except right in here off this midline and even then you probably wanted these other trend lines to kind of match up with it um, hopefully that makes sense but uh, you know sometimes these bigger picture ones you don't get enough trades off of them you have to go to smaller time frames which is what we're doing here so um, but yeah all that converges right there and that's not a great signal bar but uh, 
to bounce that many times and then have this little con, uh, confluence area where you've got this trend line and the midline of the other one um, plus all that support across there flat support I mean it's three different spots right there so I like going long and look you know people you can tell that when it went higher there a lot of people had were seeing that and you know how felt comfortable that there's probably a lot of support there and you see how it suddenly rockets off like that generally when it rockets off like that either it's a setup that's well known that people spot and like or else it's um there's some kind of trap or something so they could have trapped some shorts from right here when it when it went higher and failed and turned down so there could have been some shorts trapped in there as well to me it I don't think you're going to fool a lot of people into going short into that support. So I think it's the opposite. I think a lot of people, when it bounced there again, with a lot of confluence of a different, several different patterns all coming together there, I think that's what really drives it up. It doesn't really matter. The key is, is it fits our what we're looking for, and it takes off, which is what we want it to do. So, um, you know, you, you can drive yourself mad trying to figure out why things happen. And it doesn't really matter in the end because even if there was some news item that tells you it's, that you know about, prices don't always do exactly what you expect. So, you know, it's a to me, I don't really care what the news is or why it does it. I just want to know what it did, and I want to hope I was able to capitalize on it. That's the key, really. But we shoot up at another level, and we just kind of start. I mean, we've kind of we're kind of got a little pattern working here where we shoot up and we go sideways. We shoot up. And so we did the same thing here. You made that low. You get a double test. We bounce right off that trend line again. Um, nice bullish bar. It broke a little bit lower than previously. I like going long there. There's a higher low here that you might consider, but it's right into those highs. And um, although we did just come off this low, so that, that's one that you might consider. I'll at least make it green. I'm not crazy about it, but uh, this is really where you should have entered here. And you see, we got that little short-term trend line working up. We get a close outside a new high, and then the bottom just falls out. This is really tempting, but you don't want to go short into that trend line. Uh, notice that it drops down to the bigger pattern and bounces and gives you a second entry long, and that is a huge signal bar. So you might consider that one. I think that one's the only problem I've got with that one is the trend line still working down here. As you can see, that's the first close outside. And so we're likely to get another leg down and notice that's exact. Notice you get those two legs and that turns out to be usually that's the center of a pattern when you get that bigger uh, two legs like that. And we actually had a little trap off this one. And but that's kind of been what's happening all day. We'd kind of go sideways and get a little drop low before it takes off. And this should be right here. But anyway, there's um, we start this next leg down. I would measure this one and put it over here and uh, notice we come back to that trend line right here and get a fairly bearish bar and you got enough room to get out here so you may risk that one it ends up going a little lower but you don't know that ahead of time um, I went kind of back and forth on this one but really you try to go higher once and you know there's a hidden second entry there so you might look at that as a failure and the main thing is it's off that key entry point we don't have a measured leg yet so um, we're close but we don't quite have it and sometimes close is as close as you get so that's something else to think about so that one could is real close to being green but if you catch one of these reversals if, if we are played out here you might get another big leg down like this from this point right here and that's why I kind of like this tra trade right here because at that point I really you're really thinking hey we may be going to get another leg down and just to make it very clear I'll show you what I'm talking about you may get another leg down from here because you see those two legs within that's generally the center of a pattern it was we just didn't get another major leg down because the bigger pattern has all been all up today and they're trying to fill that gap most likely so and notice this one you you come back you get a first entry and then a second entry so you got a failed second entry there and you may get that next leg down but you're really going short right into all that support and that's why I don't that's why that one's green and not blue or red um, 
if it, if this if there was enough room in there, I'd probably make that one red. Uh, and it still worked, but you don't know that. I mean, it's too big a chance it bounces right there, so you got to be aware of that. And when it fell below here, that's that same little repeat pattern we've kind of been seeing all day. You want to grab that because that may be an important low for the day. And look at that. Would you, you know, what would you call that? I would call that a very important low for the day. And these are easy to spot. They don't always work, but there's a very high success rate of catching these failed breaks. And, and many, many times they are an important high or an important low for the day. If they fell out at the low side, they turn out to be an important low. And if they fell out the high side, they turn out to be an important high. And you can see after that two legged correction with a little trap, that's how, you know, they, people are trying to pick tops and they've all piled up to the downside and they all got an exit. And that's, so that's, I love these setups They're, I mean, when you catch, you only got to catch one or two of these and you would have had a runner here. It would never look back. Easy runner right there. And off it goes. There's a high or low right here, but it's right into that resistance. I don't think you want to risk it. There's a reversal here. Again, double top, not a very good signal bar. You could still argue for it. Um, but if you draw in that trend line right there, which really looks, and then when it, you, you, it doesn't really get confirmed till up here. So, um, I mean, this maybe is a spike in channel, but regardless, I drew the trend line off these highs and then drug it down. And you can see, um, I originally had it a little bit lower, but I adjusted it when we bounced here. So uh, it turns out there's a two tiered channel right there. And you can see here's the upper side. We still got an overshoot up here, but that was a, that was probably the trade of the, the day of the afternoon anyway. And again, that's one you might consider, um, but I just think you're better off to, to skip it. It is a failure. It is a type of reversal pattern. I'll leave it green. Then we come up here and we make this low. We make a low, another low. Then we get a double test of it. And then we bounce right off exactly that trend line, basically. Uh, the EMA, we close within this trend line. I'm, I'm going to take that long. And then we pull back and get a uh, failed second entry short there again, right off a key entry point, another nice signal bar. I like that one too. And that really, you really don't get another opportunity to enter this. Uh, it just rockets on off. And all those shorts are having to exit here most likely. You, you had a lot of shorts probably building up across here. And when it breaks above, they know they're wrong and they all have to exit and look at it go. And that's what happens. This was their line in the sand was this this double top here all these shorts and once you went above it they know they're wrong and they all have to jump ship and uh, again uh, this is also a little breakout pullback because we broke above this double you can't really tell it by looking across there but if you put that line across those highs you can see we broke just above it right there and then pull back. So that's a little breakout pullback, but the key is it, it bounced. Look where it bounced off of right off that key entry point that we found off this side. Let me go back to my arrow here. We found this line off this side and drug it down and we, we confirmed it right here. We, we got a good idea. We were right here and then we confirmed it right here and we got a nice bullish bar. You got a double bottom here, so that's basically a new low. First entry, second entry, you can treat that like a failed second entry short. Look at the midline from the big pattern. It was acting as resistance all the way up there, and then suddenly it's support again, and boom, off it goes. And this is where you would probably expect it to be shooting for is this upper side here. Just get an equal distance and hope that it shoots for that, and it does. And, of course, we don't quite make it, and we didn't quite make our measured move either. And then again, I don't know what's happened here this afternoon. It just could be a, uh, a lack of uh, volume. You know, it gets thin in the afternoons and they can manipulate it a lot easier. So, uh, but yeah, this wasn't a bad trading day. It got started a little slow. You had to be a little patient because we were really in a kind of a sideways here. And you just don't get a good opportunity to enter here. It kind of comes out of nowhere. And so you have to be a little patient, but once it settled down and right in here, it was pretty obvious what was going on. Um, 
And you had to assume early too that we may try to fill that big gap. And I mean, that's a big gap. Let me back out again. I mean, look at that big gap. And so you had to assume prices were going to try to fill that. So really the gap is between this brown line where we closed the previous trading day and where we opened at 830 today right here. So that is, I mean, that's probably 28, 97 or so. And we're, the gap is right up here, way up here at 29, 47. So that's 60, what is that, 60 points or so? Did I do the math right, I think? That's that's a pretty big gap. <laughs> and so um, prices had a long way to go to fill that gap. But you don't see many big gaps that hang around very long on a chart like that. So it doesn't surprise me that we tried to fill it. But anyway, pretty good trading day. Uh, one other thing I did want to talk about is in the mornings, you know, just remember to look at the big, the overall context. If the overall context is up, then you're going to lean to early trades being to the upside. If the overall context is down, you're going to lead to early trades being in the downside. In this case, the the overall context was kind of sideways. So and prices had just come off the high on a failed break. So what is your what are you going to be leaning towards going short? And so some people tend to miss that. Um, But you got to look at the big picture and you'll get people that hone in here and, and say, well, this this entry looks exactly like this entry and they don't look exactly the same. If you're just looking at patterns, yeah, maybe they do. But if you look at the context and you understand the signal bars and the whole everything we do, then they don't look anything close to being the same. And that's what you've got to learn to be able to discern the difference between the the, you know, you got to be able to figure out the context, the overall context. What are prices doing and where are they going? What are they trying to do? The overall context today, prices were probably trying to fill that gap. That's the first thing you want to be thinking of. But early on, we were going sideways. So all you could do is trade this range and follow the range rules. Once we broke higher and you knew you were in this trend, then, hey, I'm thinking we're trying to fill a gap. The, the bias is up. Let me find the pattern and I'm going to try to get long. And you don't see a lot of shorts in here. Uh, this one here, and and I and like I say, that could have easily been green. But you would figure you're going to get two legs there, two measured legs, and we didn't have it yet. So you may take that short. It's not a great setup, but uh, it probably should be green. But it's real close. I just left it red. And then of course there's another short here, which I, you know I was talking about. We may get that other leg down, and this bigger pattern we may be headed back to that trend line we haven't reached this upper side yet so you could get a reversal in here somewhere just like we did but when you start going sideways like this especially if, when there's a bit of big uptrend i mean we could be reversing it could be going lower and you could get another measured move down from here but i like playing these failures you know if we'd have got a good setup here to go short on a failure i probably would have taken it but instead we get a good setup to the short side and if, and by taking this one trade, one all you need is one. You could have traded two contracts today on taking this one trade at, right before lunch, and you scalp out on one and you let the runner go on the other, and it just takes off. And it's I mean it's easy pickings. Watch, study these, and learn what happens at them because you often catch important highs and lows of the days. I can't stress that enough. I mean this was a fairly important low right here. Then you had two legs up. Um, we were hoping this would be a, an important high. It didn't turn out that way. It turned out to be an important, um, it just turned out to be a failed breakout. But a lot of times you'll get an important high or important low. And today we got a couple important lows out of these. Notice when it went higher, you had a nice move right here. Had a nice move. These are just key entry points. They're just instead of being angled like a trend line, they're just flat. But they're still important key entry points that lead to big moves. So keep that in mind. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. That's almost 30 minutes worth. I'm done for today. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. 
and we'll see you next time.